So today's topic is all about perfection, perfectionism, being a perfectionist. And we're discussing, does perfectionism even really exist? Does it really exist? And typically, I, I think maybe over the years, things have changed a little bit, but typically that, that per seeking perfection has been the ideal, hasn't it? It's been the, the thing that we search for is a very positive place, get things perfect, you know, like this like, sense of excellence and greatness and plays and all this is wrapped up in perfection. And so I think it's important for us to discuss it because whilst it's been touted as a very positive thing, um, there are some real downsides to that. And I think, and so I think it would be good for us to discuss that. Particularly, I mean, this is something that impacts on us in all facets of life. Um, mm. But particularly for my side, in terms of when you speak to people, when you're dealing with your company or you moving forward, along all of the stuff that's wrapped up in it comes from this idea of trying to try and achieve perfectionism so i guess it's it's something that's important for us to discuss and then definitely i think on your side of it the the, the mental um, health issues that arise as a result of someone kind of being constantly in that place of trying to deal with perfection, perfection. yeah yeah um so would you like to um, start off the talk? Also, what I would like everyone today to do, I really would like everybody to engage in the topic. So if you can put your own thoughts about perfection, um, do you strive for perfection? Um, how has um, the idea of being perfect affected you in your life? Yeah, yeah so sure. please everybody um, engage with the, the conversation. Mm -hmm. So as a coach, you know, because you deal with transformation, transforming people, transforming their minds, how do you work with someone who comes into your, um, comes in to see you, wants help from you, and they want things to be done in a particular way and for it to be perfect, before they even decide to implement one thing that's on their list? Yeah, I think, I think that's a very good question. Um, the reason why that's good is the, the key issue with this is perf, perf, well, perfect and perfectionism is, is a term that is open to interpretation. Okay, like genuinely, it's very difficult for like, what is perfect? It's very much open to interpretation in terms of where different people are. It's not a universal term unless you're dealing with some very solid things. And the reality, the actual dictionary definition about this perfectionism and, and like maybe achieving things which are flawless or without fault and all those things, I think that's the biggest fallacy in itself because that's high, that's not often possible. You know, that's really not possible. And some of the greatest things that we've achieved in life have come because there have been errors or there have been flaws. So when people come to me, you might not realise that it's, it's, there's this element of perfectionism. Because you know some people call themselves a perfectionist. And then, so that when you're there and you've identified and you're calling yourself a perfectionist, it's a lot easier for people to name and identify the things that they're doing because they, they know they're not going to be perfect, so I'm going to spend the extra time on it. They know the stuff that they're doing, but sometimes we, don't, we might not necessarily call ourselves that, things. we might not say perfectionist, but the actions and things that we are doing are coming because we're trying to actually seek some level of perfection. And some of the, so there's two areas to this. I can say, there's certain traits that are very similar, which I probably purport to be in, people might think it's perfection. So I believe in higher education. That's something that perfectionists do, right? I focus on results. I'm very much no longer a just results person. So that results focus thing is again traits of um kind of kind of perfectionism. I am I feedback, I can be highly critical, particularly of myself. Um and again that's something that's um about like that's linked into that perfectionism. 
but there's there's, there's fine line blind all of those things are also things which high achievers kind of work to work and i think what we should focus more on is being a high achiever rather than this level of perfection which isn't realistic and isn't possible because the flip side of all those things are is what we end up doing is because we're trying to be perfect we don't have high expectations we end up setting unrealistic um, standards yeah so it's something of i have all these great expectations and if your expectation is perfection you often end up having an unrealistic standard yeah so and then the crit being critical is important so it's good to identify and see where you're going wrong. If it's a level of criticism, that could end up taking you being highly judgmental and defensive and only focusing on negatives, the bad outcome, rather than actually seeing the point of development. Yeah. And again, results. Um, no nonsense, focus on the road. That should be the goal. There's a journey of getting to the result. So but you have to enjoy the journey and you have to go through the journey. If you only, if you, sometimes again, perfectionism is like, well, no, I was expecting to get 100 out of 100. So when you get 99 out of 100, you almost wipe out all the work that you did in between. It's like, okay, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Because I didn't get that result. Right. 100 out of 100. So when you're, when you're talking to people and I'm dealing with them, often the language that you'll hear them use, which identify those things, is, I should have done this. Or I must, I must do, that. do that, okay? Or I have or to I do have this. And when they say all these things, things, I'm like, who is the person? Who is this universal person that says you should do this thing? Who Who is it? Like, because you've said it, it's almost as though someone has actually sat you down and said, this is what you should do. I must achieve this outcome. Okay. Who was the person that told you this must? You know, where does all this, I have to do, where does all this direction come from? And when they just take that moment, they realise, like, there's two things. It's a standard that they've created themselves. This is something that I have, I have decided myself, but I've got that standard from somewhere. And often the standard comes from external influences from society. And it's this thing where you kind of feel like, well, in order for me to look successful or be successful or be reputable or something external from this validation from this external box, I believe these are the things that I must do or should do or how I'm supposed to pass it. And then, so I break them down. And I'm saying, so how does that fit into, what is it that you really want to do? Like, what's the thing that you're focusing on? What's the outcome? That you really that you really want because that's what's important that, that's not important and what do you need to do what do you need to do to get there because those are the things that are important. and what you're focused on is what people think rather than what's important what, mm, what you should be doing so can i ask you a question have you in any point in your life struggled with um perf being perfect perfectionism I think, I think so. For, I can say, fortunately, um, I don't struggle with perfectionism, and that's solely because that's solely because um, I'm dyslexic, and the that that attention to detail thing is one of the things that I struggle with, and so it, even in that moment when I've checked something a hundred million times or gone over, and I tried to make sure it's quote unquote perfect. I'll put it down and I'll put it the next day and I'll find an error. And so kind of because I know that it's gonna like it's gonna take a ridiculous amount of effort, time and resources and extra for me to ever get something to that level of perfection, I I I don't do that. And naturally I'm not an attention to detail type of person. So it's not it's not not because not I've been semi fortunate that I haven't that fallen down those roads because I know I that would be that for me. Because if I was trying, I was trying to, to get certain things to, the, to focus on that on that level of perfection, I'd probably go and go insane. insane. And but what that but does what that is because I have that need and that area, what it enabled me to do and see is that that's realistic, right? Because I know that the realism is that it's going to be very difficult 
for you, one, me. So I know I can be very difficult for me to get something perfect like that on my own. So therefore, what I need to do is give myself my time to let someone take over something or get some time to let a process where something else can, can you know, things you might not be able to see. And so let me like, strategies that I tell people when or try mm-hmm. or try make something perfect. So let me ask you a question, right? In you, as a coach, what tips would you give someone that comes to you saying that, you know, they are finding it really difficult to produce um, the work that they know that they can do to, to, to do this thing that they've been wanting to do for ages. And, you know, it, um, they're struggling because they're finding that, you know, it's not coming, materializing the way that they want. It's not perfect. What tips would you give um, your client so that we okay. can give some pe- so, um, everyone who's here some tips on how they can deal with this idea of perfect? Yeah, so, so the number one the number thing, one thing like, like, I said, like I said, like I said, who said it has to be perfect? Is like, like, get, like I really, I really let's really break that down. Whatever this, first and foremost, whatever this thing is, what is perfect? In your, it's you, what is perfect? So it's about identifying what is it that you're trying to achieve? What is this perfect? And making sure that in the very first instance, whatever is in your mind, in your head about perfect is realistic. Is it your view of perfect? Or is this you listening to external factors of people perfect? So once you've got that, and I said, okay, because then then even though you're saying it's perfect, it's probably something more realistic that you can achieve. So then we go down the next step is, okay, so what is it that you need to do to achieve this perfect or this goal, this thing that it is that you're trying to achieve? And be honest about that. And can you do that by yourself or do you need support? You know, do you, do you need support? And if you can, do, you can do that by yourself, then what are the steps that you need to do? What's stopping you? What's preventing you from maybe doing that? You're like, oh yeah, I can do it, but Will it be good enough? Okay, so how will you know whether or not it's good enough? Where are you getting these? Where are you getting these judgments from? It's always about identifying. Okay, so what's the benchmark that you are you are guiding something against? And often that's what you need. So whether that benchmark is a checklist or something you can do, whether that benchmark is a group of people who you can get to check and make sure that it meets the criteria that you know you're trying to get to. So for so, for example, if I was creating a training program or I was doing something like that, I would lean on my colleagues and my people who are expertise in that area. So as much as I know it, I would say, OK, can you go, can you check this? Can you go over it? I'd ask them, for example, this activity or this particular task. What 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 do you get from it? How you what you learn? So I wouldn't tell them what it is. I'd ask them what they get from it to double check mm-hmm. that the activity that I've created is actually is presented in the way and it's doing the learning that I want it to do. So if they say, yes, okay, I, I think what you're trying to do is get people to understand something and that's what I'm trying to do, it's worked. And if it hasn't right. worked, then I can be like, okay, no, that's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to do this. What do you think I need to do in order to get that message across? That's, and that's what you do. So if it's a group of people, but they have to be experts, right? This is what I'm saying. That's why I always start at that point of, where are you getting this information from about where it is you want to go? And so so that you yourself can check, am I using and am I going to the correct people for this level of judgment? Okay, because yes, you want your friends to redeem, redeem you, but if they're not an expert as a, as a coach, what does it matter if my friend thinks I'm amazing? If the experts in the, you know, in the group of areas that I'm trying to go into don't think so. So all of those things are very important. So if it's a group of people, then then use that group of people to get the feedback. If there's a specific criteria or checklist or things that you need to have, then go and find out whatever that thing is so that you've got something to benchmark it against. But often, you know what you say, Anne-Marie, we lie to ourselves and we come up with things with, which are fake. There's no real facts to this conclusion that we've come to. So get something that helps back it up so that you can double check it against something. Okay. And you know where you were talking, you mentioned support, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think that that is a really important point that when you um, can't get out of this like 
fog I call it this fog fog brain yeah. of like things have to be perfect and so in actual fact um your judgment on what you're looking at is actually quite foggy because yeah. you're looking at it from a place of perfection mm-hmm. right how important is it to seek support it's it's important it's it's you, you need you know like you when you're in it you know when you're attached to something you know you can't you can't see it so it's the same thing like when i say you know when you write something and then you um, and then you need to proofread something you can't proofread it yourself because you know what you wrote. So when you're reading it, you're not reading the words that are on the paper. You're reading the message that you knew. So you miss you miss the mistakes. And you read it again and again and again and again and again. And then someone comes along, reads it for you, and they spot the mistake straight away. And you're like, how did you do that? Because they were reading what was there. So it's very important that you get support, I'm, but I'm going to reiterate, okay, that in a professional capacity, in the most things, in any sort of capacity anyway, right, whatever that is, the person that's giving you this feedback needs to be qualified. And I don't mean academically with anything like that, right? If you're talking to somebody about relationships, then I don't think your girlfriend, yeah, who has been in and out of lots of different relationships and failed, um, is the best person to be taking that advice from. Do you understand? So the same thing. So if it's whatever that area is, you need to make sure that you are genuinely getting feedback from people who have got the correct qualifications, however that means, to provide you with that feedback. Right. And um, I just, one of the things that I want to, add is that you need to have like sometimes it's good to have a mixed group like everybody can't be the same they can't bring the same thing Mm -hmm. i tell you the god honest truth right i do not like reading over anything right so if i've got an article or an essay to write or whatever it might be my downfall is i do not want to read it over it has already bored my life right i do not want to read it over but what I what happens with it is that if I do read it over, I start to get really, really finicky and picky, right? And I spend so much time taking out, putting in, taking out, putting in, that it just ruins the essence of what I wanted to deliver in the first place, mm-hmm. right? So what I usually do, I say, for example, I've got a task. Do that task. I might um, read it through or check my checklist, so forth, and... Then what I do is I send it out to a couple people, maybe more than a couple, about three or four people. And I say, what do you think of this? So I look for feedback, mm-hmm. right? And once I get that feedback, then I go, yeah, actually, I could see how that works better. Or I could see how, yeah, this just works just fine as it is. Rather than me getting stuck in my head and going, do you know what I mean? Like, how can you get feedback from yourself? Mm-hmm. But no, the thing is, you know what? You can you you can go through that process, but you have to be very sensible about it. So, for example, particularly if you're dealing with someone who's a perfectionist, okay, you've got a letter to write, and there's some key information that needs to be included in this letter, right? Because you're sending it out to a to a client, to a customer, to whatever it is you're doing. You've got this letter to write. Write down a, what does it need to include. So it needs to include the person's name. It needs to include the details of the product. It needs to include how to get there. You know, this, this is the checklist that we're talking about. That's what's important. That it includes all of this key information. So when you're writing and you're looking at your piece, that's the criteria that you are looking for, that it ticks those things. Now, there are certain things that are going to require a level of finesse and extra writing around it. They do extra. And then there's certain things that you just need to provide them with this pieces of information. And there comes a point where you just need to say, I've I've said everything that is relevant and needed in this letter and stop and leave it there. Because after a while, like you said, you come to a point where you're wasting your returns on your your investment. Because what you end up doing is you've ticked all the boxes. Everything that's required in this letter is in the letter. Okay, it took you an hour, whatever, you know. But then because you were being finicky and you're going to continue doing all these things, you could end up spending another two hours on this letter. Now, whatever you had to do, the two hours that you spent on it, 
are you is it valid so those extra two hours are you is the outcome going to equate to an extra two hours or more in whatever capacity that you're going to be getting that return and nine times out of ten come on it really it really really isn't it really really is and i and i'm that person let me the, my area of perfectionism, okay, I suppose like one of the things that I do, well, I, I'm that person who will, when I'm creating things and I have to get an image, I'm that person who has the image in my head. I have the image in my head that what the image needs to look like. And I will now go to Google and I'll be searching for the image that's in my head. And, I'll, and I'm telling you, Anne-Marie, if I, if I don't collect myself, <laughs> I will be searching through Google Images for 20, 30 minutes for one insignificant image. It's not that deep. It's really not that important. The people in my training session, okay, are not now going to stand up and be like, oh my God, Martha, the image that attached that, um, that you attached to that slide and that piece of, <laughs> that piece of content was so informative that it changed. It's really not adding that much value. But two hours later, here I am searching for, and I haven't even wrote the content. Do you understand? So I could end up being like that. And then you missed your window. I could end up being like that. And I say to myself, Martha, none. First and foremost, you've got an image in your head. It's not even like you've got an image of a head because you're an artist or you're an illustrator or you're a photographer and you know that you've uploaded this image somewhere. <laughs> so you can go and find it. You can't find the image that's in your head. So decide, right? So you're either going to get pictures, which are solid pictures, or you're getting clip arts, or you're getting whatever it is you're doing. Decide on that. Find something. Settle. It's really not that deep. It's really not that deep. And I give myself that. So when I catch myself doing it, say, Martha, you've got two minutes to find a picture. Get the picture. Put it on. And you know the reality of it is, is in that moment, in that moment, the the we all know how it is. You know when something frustrates you, you're like, no, I really want. In that moment, that's how you feel. It's, it's like it's like nails on a chalkboard. You know, at that moment, it's so frustrating because it's not what you had. You feel it. But after you've gone on and you've gone, you forget about it because it's really not that important. And that's the truth of it. And I, I think people should be able to um, put, um, put a price on what they're doing. So like what you're saying, assess your return, mm -hmm. right? There is no point you um getting fixated on something being perfect right if you know that you can earn right um 50 pounds an hour for example or 100 pounds an hour right and you spent right three hours on for example one instagram post right three hours right that is 300 pounds that means that Instagram post needs to give you back 300 pounds. Yeah, and is it? But in actual fact, it should actually double, right? So you should be able to get 600 pounds back from that Instagram post. You've already wasted that amount of time on that thing that has not been able to generate, generate you 600 pounds, right? It's like, it's like, do you spend an hour washing your own car, right? That you could have earned a hundred pounds or do you outsource and pay somebody 10 pounds and it takes them 10 minutes to wash your car? You have to think like that, right? Is it, does it make any sense for me to strive for perfection in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Can I ever get perfection, right? No, but can I be satisfied with the work that i've put out um does it go with my values and my my beliefs and my morals then yes right you've ticked um tick those boxes right and that's when you just say to yourself enough is enough yeah. right i'm gonna invest for example i don't know whatever amount of time you know you need to do a piece of work right you don't go you don't need to go over that right if you know that it's going to take you an hour to or two hours to write um an article write that gather your research write that article right you know you've dedicated 200 pounds to that article right that you want to generate you 400 pounds but guess what 
right? Because you're not going to get stuck in perfection, what you're going to do is outsource, right? And you're going to send it out to four or five people that can read it and give you feedback, right? All of a sudden, you have spent no money, but these people can be your editor. Yeah. These five people are your editors. And I, and I mean, also, do you know what that reminds me of as well? So something that that's kind of brought me back to is, is, is you can also, we're not saying perfectionism is bad. You can, you can aim for it. You can, you can aim for it, but it should be, it should be realistic. So for example, the perfectionism might be, I'm, I've got an exam or I've got a test and I want to get a hundred out of a hundred. Okay. Or, you know, you want to pass your driving test with zero faults or you know they, these are these are all things which that's that's fine the the whole point of it is, is there's there's a number of stuff that's around it first and foremost the, the the perfectionism that you are trying to achieve has to be realistic because often it's unrealistic bit unrealistic bit, unrealistic and unach, unachievable so that's where that's where it's problematic okay it's un, you're trying to achieve something that's impossible and i and and those of you who know me, I'm not the type of person that says lots of things are impossible because I believe in really pushing our boundaries and, and going out there. So I'm like that. Let's try, let's aim for the top thing. Yeah. But when you're when you're aiming for it, don't get so caught up on this level of perfectionism that you, it let, you let it hold you back. So don't now, when you're trying to, whatever this great thing is that you're trying to achieve, don't now get caught up in procrastination because you're so worried about, okay, now before I go and perform, or before before I send the email, or before I do this thing, before I start my business, before I sell this item, before I approach anybody and ask them for something, it has to be this level of perfect before I do those things. No. So aim for that, and which is why we say, okay, so when you're saying you want to go and pitch to somebody, identify all the things that you need to have in your pitch and make sure you've got all of those things. That's the level of perfect. But it's not, you don't get to that level where you let it hold you back and you let it stop you from achieving because you've got so caught up in something that's, that's unrealistic on the one hand. Then the, on the other hand of that, when you do perform and you achieve and it doesn't go as well as it's planned, it's fine. It really isn't the end of the world. You're going to hear me say this all the time. Will you die? And I know it sounds silly, but I'm telling you, that's ask, you can ask the people, my, you can ask the, my, my coaches, yeah, that they will tell you. But I'm that person, I can be very, I go very deep. And when we get to a certain point, that's why, I'm Marie, that's why I couldn't be a counsellor. I'd be a terrible counsellor. <laughs> why couldn't you be a counsellor? Because I'll be that person, yeah, when you're coming to me and I'll be like, you've seen me for six weeks and you're still telling me about the same problem that I told you last week, how to fix it. And you're still on. No, but we don't do that. That's my counselors point. do not tell you how to fix your problems. My point. That's my point. So that's why <laughs> I'm saying it because you will still be coming to me for this thing, and I'll be like, listen. I'll be like, listen. Will you die? When this happens, will you? So what? That's what I say to people because because the, what we talk about, right? We talk to ourselves and we give ourselves stories in our heads that become true. Or, and we start hearing all these things. Oh, oh no, I can't do this because this is going to happen. Oh, I can't go for this. And I'm like, okay, you're correct. You know, you could go to this person, you could pitch something to them, you could ask them for something, and they're going to tell you, no, it's rubbish, it's not good enough, and send you away. Mm -hmm. Will you be dead? No. You'll be, you're, you'll be a bit hurt. You'll be a bit upset. You'll be all of that but you won't be dead. It's really not the end of the world. And I have to take it to that level of extreme because that's how you brought yourself up. That's that's what causes anxiety. You have built all of that stuff up when you're not even really, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to die. Like it's really not that bad. That's the one. And then the third thing is, there's a the flip side of this, okay? So this is, for, this is for a group of people who are maybe not really even realistic because the flip side of this other one is those of you who act like you're aiming for perfection, but you're not even putting in the work. Like, you're saying, I want this to be perfect, but I don't see you doing any sort of work that can make something, that you're working towards perfection. I mean, yeah, so there's, this, there's all of these groups of people. That is who, a mockery. They, no, but there's that group who are being like, oh no, uh, you know, I've just got to wait until this thing happens or that, or, or, or you want something to be in a particular type of manner and I want it to be like that. And I'm sitting here looking at you thinking, what, do you think it's going to drop out of the sky? 
you've got to be realistic as well. If you are, if you're on it like that, then you've also got to put the work in. So like I, so my key thing is, is high, be a high achiever. I'm, I have very high expectations. I have very high expectations of myself first and foremost. So I have high expectations of myself first and foremost, which means I will put the work in and I'll do whatever is required and needed so that those expectations become a reality. Okay. But I also know I'm, I'm human. I'm human. So I'm going to try and aim for the highest thing possible. And that's where I want to go. But if I don't make it, if I don't make it, I'm going to have a realistic evaluation of why I didn't make it. Was I slacking? Because I, we all slack. So was I being like, oh, yeah, Mark, but you didn't really take it seriously. So you can't be upset. Or did I, oh, do you know what? Did I try really, 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 really hard? And guess what? It just didn't, it just didn't work. It just never, I just never made it. Simple. Right. So I feel like, you know, even with what you're talking about, about, you know, people striving for this um, perfection and it getting in the way of, you know, their dreams, their goals and stuff like that. And I think I said this before um one of my um favorite um motivational speakers um uh, mr les brown um he says that the richest place in the world is the graveyard right because people mm -hmm. um die with their dreams yeah right they don't implement or put, do anything and they die i'll tell you another funny thing right um a chinese person once said right that the problem that black people have is not that they don't dream big is not that they don't have great ideas they do not implement right they do not implement and one of the things that holds us back right is that we have this idea that we're not good enough mm -hmm. right yeah, and i could break it down to the many different things where this comes from yeah it comes from family it comes from society it comes from trauma mm -hmm. there are so many different things but i'm going to be very honest with you right if you do not heal that not good enough self you will always stop yourself from achieving your goals right because in your eyes Nothing is good enough. Nothing is perfect. And so you cannot um, put out something that's not perfect because what you're going to get is ridiculed, criticized, put down, told that you're um, not sufficient, told that you're, um, you don't know what you're doing, you're not good enough, not given the promotion, not um, given the, um, you know, the, the money or the light that you need. But the problem is not the external. The problem is in the internal. Because you're the one that doesn't have the self-belief. Right? When we're striving for perfection, what we're actually saying is, I don't believe that I'm good enough. Right? And so in order for me to be good enough, this thing that I'm doing has to be completely perfect. Right? This is a problem though. Okay? And I want anyone who has strived for perfection, who has allowed their um, doubt in their mind to get in the way of them not implementing their goals, to write in the, the comment box how this has affected them, right? Because I'm going to tell you, it causes anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And can you, it causes can you, depression. Um, but before, okay, because I think we understand depression, but I don't think people actually understand anxiety. So can you explain that to them? Because I think it's very important because I see this so yeah. much. Anxiety is the fear of the unknown. Yeah. The fear that you won't get it right. The fear that you um it won't be good enough. Yeah. The fear that what has happened in the past will then happen again. But I guess, but I tell you something, right? Anxiety is like being in a, re in, in a toxic relationship, right? If you think of anxiety like that, anxiety is that toxic man or that toxic woman, right? 
because at every turn you make, Mr. or Mrs. Anxiety is trying to bring you down. Yeah? They are trying to confuse you in what your reality really is. Right? Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Anxiety is trying to isolate you. Right? Mr. or Mrs. Anxiety does not want you to succeed at life. They want your dreams to go to the grave. So your relationship with anxiety is toxic. And, then, and, and he or she needs to go. go. And that's kind of the, and that's the negativity side that falls from the um, trying to achieve perfection. But because that's what you're trying to do, aren't you? You're trying to make sure, okay, I can control this. I know I, this is the known factor and I can make sure this happens. So what would you say were some tips that people can do when dealing with those sorts of things? Number number one, forget the list that has 20,000 things on it. Put it in the bin. <laughs> Put it in the bin, right? You only need to achieve, for example, set yourself one or three things a day. Yeah? One or three things for the week. Yeah? That list needs to go in the bin. Okay? The other thing that you, the other tip that you need, something that we touched on before, is support. You need a good support system, right? Because you can't stay in your own mind frame. Because your mind, your mind frame is telling you you are not good enough. Yeah? So you can't stay in that mind frame. So you need to um, outsource. You need to look for support. Okay? Um, number three. Oh, I cannot preach this a thousand times self-care right self-care does not mean you need to spend 500 pounds and going to um, a hotel for the weekend no it does not yeah self-care is not spending that much money on doing much right it means that you find that space that quiet time whether it's that you're soaking in the bath for half an hour 20 minutes, right? Or you go for a little 10 minute walk, right? Or you, um, I don't know, sit down and have some candles, listen to some music, whatever self-care looks like for you. Cause I can't tell you what that might be. I know that my, my best thinking space is in the bath and no one can come and talk to me. That's my space. And everybody who knows me knows that I will be in there forever. But that's my self-care space. I don't need to spend £500 on a swanky hotel. I just need to have a moment where I'm just doing me. And that's what you need to do, right? Also, another tip that um, helps you with um, anxiety is allowing the feeling to come in. Mm -hmm. So know that you're feeling anxious and uh, and let it come in and then ask yourself, okay, what is happening? Why I'm feeling anxious, right? So give yourself the space to explore that because the worst thing you can do is try and suppress it, try and suppress it, try and do all these things because what you're doing is you're not dealing with the anxiety, right? Yeah. And often that you've, you've, that's been self-inflicted because you've set an un like it's kind of like deep down inside, you know you've set a target that you can't achieve. So it's almost like you're now anxious because you're thinking, how the hell am I going to do this? Like I don't even know how am I going to achieve this big thing? And you have placed you have placed all of your value and all of your worth, your worth, you placed all of that on this unrealistic outcome. So it's like a circle because now you can't even attempt to try and achieve it and fail because mm. if you do it and fail, you are the failure because you've you've attached all of your value to it. And then you don't know what's going to happen. 
otherwise. So you just go around in one big old unnecessary and very unnecessary um, yeah. circle. It, it's, it's really, it really is. So I think, I think it's important that that you that you really, really understand. There's a difference. There's a there's a huge, huge difference between you having high expectations and wanting to achieve great things and the greatest thing as close as possible to perfection and perfection in areas that are realistic and then you actually set an unrealistic standard there's nothing in the yeah. world there's very few things in the world that meet all of these levels of perfect us as a human being which is we are an amazing creature we're not even perfect our eyebrows are not the same length our eyes are not the same our noses are not the same our hands are not the same. So like nothing's the same. we're not even perfect we're not without flaw and that's but that's the beauty isn't it that is actually the beauty so when you actually see that reality that reality that maybe it's not about achieving that and understanding the maybe imperfect is the perfect well of course it is like there is there is no that this idea i don't know who created this word because maybe they should be shot but there is no such thing as perfect yeah I am perfect within myself, within my own yeah. right, right? Yeah. I don't need to conform to someone else's idea of who I should be. But the, what, what a lot of people don't want to come to terms with, right, is that you have to truly know yourself from the inside out, right, <laughs> and value yourself, right <laughs> really really long screen name says he says excuse me, me i'm perfect okay. exactly you are perfect within your own right no you are and you have to you have to be able to accept that you are good enough for as who you are right and you saying that you're good enough right that doesn't mean that you don't have things that you need to still work on exactly yeah it doesn't mean that um you're not gonna make mistakes mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that um there's not gonna be times where you're gonna experience these um low moods but what you know is life is a journey right and your aim is to continuously seek out ways of growing and developing mm -hmm. the funny thing about growing and developing is you can't grow and develop if you're not allowing yourself to explore yeah yeah if you are not allowing your ex yourself to explore you can't grow and develop that is the bottom line yeah it is the fundamental um point of development so if you if you think of um children right when they're toddlers that's where you call the um exploration um part of their development yeah yeah and so um you know they're climbing on um bloody i don't know sofas walls and jumping off Everywhere. with like no regard right at the top no of the fear. stairs and going catch me and <laughs> <laughs> jumping off and you as an adult you're like oh my god and you're panicking but the child is so free that's how you have to see life, right? That it's okay for you to make mistakes, explore, because that's where you grow, that's where you develop. That's where you think, okay, do you know what? Maybe I can't jump from um, 12 steps up. I can jump from three yeah. and land safely. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just about, think about your child self. How daring were you? How imaginative were you? How 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 carefree? You didn't even think of where you're gonna get dinner from, but mm -hmm. you you got dinner on the table. Mm -hmm. And you know, a prime example of that is, you know, I say now, okay. So when I was a teenager, about eighteen, I went through a phase that all I was doing there was watching horror movies. Listen, I was like the queen of horror movies, and I done media at university at, um, at college. What did you watch, Candyman? No, yeah, Candy I watched all of them, all of Candy them, Man. all of them. And I do learn Sorry. about all of the different kind of, you know, the rules and the screens and the typical storylines behind them. So I was like 
looking at the way the movies were made and panning and then so some of the really good horror movies I was like yeah that's because they went away from the horror movie script and I was just like horror movies up try get me I don't even watch horror movies anymore yeah what <laughs> no, no no you've got no, to I'll, no I'll do thriller and even I don't do horror movies okay and even if a thriller there's me I'm that person here yeah, who is I'm that person who jumps off the sofa, who's underneath the couch. You know, I'm like this, you know, you go through your eyes. I'm that person. <laughs> and I said to myself, I don't understand when this happened. And it's just a part of life, right? It's like now you're you're grown up and you're older and you've 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 been exposed to more things. So you know there's more things that are real, there's more things that are happening. Oh my gosh, what's happening? I hope she comes back home. Is it my die or is it me? Lost. Oh, there you are. Wait, Lost. hold on. You were gone. No, you you were gone. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you went. I'm here. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so I'm saying so. And that's the same thing that happens with just life and us in general. So what I say with the perfectionism stuff is that thing, do you know what? You set the tone and the criteria of your level of perfection. So what is perfect for, what is it perfect for you? The perfect is, these are the things that I wanted. These are the criteria that I wanted. This is the standard that I wanted it to. And when you tick all those standards, that's perfect. Please right. don't, be, don't be calling yourself and getting or striving for these levels of perfection that you think because other people want to see me in a particular manner or because other people yeah. value something or other people other people judge something. The most powerful thing that you have is when you know yourself and you, you know yourself and your value not in comparison to others. People always like to compare us and they say, well, if you don't compare somebody, then you don't know where they are. No, what is that? No, I'm not. So don't compare me. Like I have worth and I have value because I have worth and I have value. Not in comparison to somebody else, which then makes someone feel, external people feel they can say, I am more or I am less based on other people. No, not none of that at all. Okay, none of that at all. Yeah. In the world of work or in places where they might require a comparison, yeah, that's fine. But when, when you, for your goals, and even in your even in your career, even in your job, or whatever it is that you're trying to do, I'm telling you, you set down and you decide what that perfect is for you. And I've been saying being realistic here. You decide those things. You set that goal. You have that high expectation and you strive to achieve them and you put the, you put the work in and you know it's a journey. And sometimes, like, in business, we have smart objectives and targets and goals or whatever, okay? And that's make, they make their very specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timed. And so so if there's a time scale on something and you don't reach a goal, it's not a failure. It's not a failure. You haven't failed. You've missed the deadline. You haven't reached it at that time. It doesn't mean it's never going to happen. It can happen later. And that's what it should yeah. be. That's, what you that's how you learn and yeah. grow and move on for something so for me i don't believe in failure i don't believe in failure because nothing is final like there's not that's not it i don't believe in failure you've not failed you can try again you can try you again. can't fail at, you can't fail at anything yeah so, and if it doesn't if you believe that then then you won't get caught up in this this cycle and the negativity of perfection because you'll know that it might not be that's where that word yet is so powerful you're just not yeah. there yet yet and the thing is nothing is a failure right and i want us to leave out on you know lockdown and everything because i think this is a perfect point of it coming in because nothing is about you failing everything is about this is a challenge and you have a window of opportunity what is your opportunity in this thing right if you don't take anything from today, from me, what I'm saying is 
allow yourself to explore, right? Take, I'm not saying be as daring and, um, you know, unbounded as a, as a toddler. But what I'm, what I'm saying is take calculated risks, yeah, and push yourself through challenges so that you can see your window of opportunity. You can't see it from over on the other side in anxiety, right? Anxiety does not want you to see your opportunity, right? And so you have to push through, yeah? If anxiety is um, becoming a challenge, Push through that challenge so you can see the window of opportunity so that you can explore and you can take t calculated risks, right? Perfection does not um, exist, right? If someone told me that um, my GCSEs would not make me a bloody therapist, I would have not wasted so much of my time bloody stressing over exams. We're not all good at exams, bloody hell don't let me moan about that because that will get <laughs> know, me off from think, something else i think you know i think you're right and in light of the fact that we are going in down into a, a second lockdown um and i think the story and the message from that is you know it's not it's not ideal is it it's not perfect it's not what we want so potentially the the, the you know the christmas that we wanted is not going to be the way or the ideal plan that i wanted is not going to happen and all of these there's, there's going to be loads of reasons that it's going to spoil what it is but remember you decide what perfect is so you set the time so so what would be a perfect lockdown situation for you you decide what that is you create that criteria you do what it what you need to do to make that and live your perfect um, lockdown. And I know that might feel and seem like, oh, it's easier said than done, because it is, but it's also about what you focus on. Like we said in our last session, okay? So it's also about what you focus on. So you can focus right. on the things that you can't control and that you can't do nothing about and get into a place where it isn't ideal or you can enjoy while you can the stuff that you can and focus and make the most of what you have control over and that's your and that's going to be your narrative and so on that note i do hope you enjoyed our session Perf perfectionism wait it's we've got we've got a, a couple minutes how many minutes amory two i don't know but i just feel like we've got like three minutes so i'm just Wait, 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 wait. I'm just wondering if anyone mm -hmm. is stressed about the lockdown. Um, if they feel that, um, you know, being on furlough is um, the worst thing that could happen right now. Um, if it means, um, if it means something, um, maybe neg negative feelings towards their business productivity, whatever it is. I just want to know if anyone has any fears around this lockdown and it coming and if they would like us to talk about this in a topic um, and give you some tips because um, being on lockdown doesn't mean you're in lockup, right? It doesn't mean that everything stops. What it means is this is a challenge and you have to find your window of opportunity in whatever business it is that you're doing. Find your window of opportunity. And I am happy for you guys to send us um, messages on Under Unlocked mm -hmm. and ask us questions. Um, Martha is professionally trained. I am trained. We can help you to, um, you know, go through, find your tips yourself of what you can do to kind of push yourself out of this space. Please, because... please, please remember, I'm not a counsellor. And please what? remember, I'm a please remember, I'm a no nonsense, just results person. Please, like I'm. Uh, uh, listen, please remember, okay? I'm gonna come with the truth. That's hard. I'm not gonna tiptoe yeah. around it with you. So if you're at well, you can ask for point, who you want. You can ask for the coach or the therapist. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can ask to speak to the coach or the therapist. But they still I mean, we, essentially, we do the same thing. We don't. No, we do. Essentially, we do the same thing. And the same thing is that we want you to find your true, authentic self. Yeah? Your own place of happiness. Right? It can't exist in anxiety and depression. Yeah? I it can't exist if you don't take steps. 
to achieving your goals, right? So we both want the same thing. Amri just has more patience than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you guys for joining. Um, please feel free to send us some messages. Oh, I love that live, the perfect lockdown. We can rise up in lockdown. Yes. Yep. Listen, if you, we, we just spent, how much long was it? Was it four months we were in lockdown? Yeah. I right? Mean, they're, I, saying, they're saying one month. I don't believe it, right? But what I'm saying to you is, if you don't take anything from this, go away and write down three things that you would like to achieve from now until December the 2nd. Yeah? Three things. And remember... Don't strive for perfection. Also, can I add, can I note to self here? Because I told Anne-Marie this, I told a couple of my other people and I've told a few people, part of that process and self-development might just be you take a time out because Martha yeah. closed stop. Yeah, yeah whatever really it is. Me, but part of that just might be take a break. So I'm not taking on any new projects. I'm taking a, I'm taking a break. I'm just closing out. I've already started. I shall ask Amarie, she'll tell you, I already closed. Like, I'm just finishing out what I've already done and I'll come back fresh and new in the new year. Because sometimes I think as well, we have caused some anxiety with people yeah. because we have made them feel like, oh, you have to do loads during this period. No, but you're not, business. but you're not, not doing anything. You are um, finishing off and closing out. Mate. So that's a completely different no, scenario. No, no, no. Listen, That's, we gotta make money. We can't finish off and close up. But just try, everyone. Just know, yeah. When I become a multi-millionaire and I'm making passive income, I'm closing shop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye everyone. Um, bye. thank you for joining. Speak soon. Send us your DMs. Oh, please share. <laughs>